Hey there, everybody. So, uh, yeah, as you can see, I got out of the office, had a little snow, but it warmed up. It's like uh, 35 degrees out here, which is kind of nice because it had been like 20. And so, yeah, vast improvements. So I thought I'd get out. It's like three o'clock in the afternoon. Sun will set in about 45 minutes. Actually, by 4.30, it's dark here. But uh, yeah, hey, the more I use the X-Trans sensor and the more I learn about it, the more I like it. And the more I'm actually pretty much in awe at what Fuji has done. So there, you know, hey, I was there a few years back. I was like, ah, screw the X-Trans. It's the stupidest thing in the world. It's so complicated and I got to use special software and it sucks and blah, blah, blah. And you know, it really is the height of ignorance to uh, put something down that you don't fully understand or you don't even try to understand. Like that, that really is the height of ignorance as far as I'm concerned. And um, you know, I'm really glad I was willing to stick with it and try it. I knew there was something there because the quality of the image is like the APS-C and an X-Trans sensor and an APS-C camera always seemed like when you got it right that it was swinging above its weight. Well, I kind of know why now. Like I just learned some stuff last week in an article from uh, Imaging Resource that kind of blew me away. There's, there's a lot of thought that went into the X-Trans processor, uh, processor, X-Trans sensor. So um, I'll try to explain it. It's a little technical, but I really learned some stuff. Uh, so first of all, like, you know, there's the concept of moiré or aliasing where the, uh, so you have red, blue, uh, red, green, blue, green, right? That's the bear pattern. So it's red, green, green, blue, and then it repeats. And it's a block of four that repeats on the sensor. Um, the sensor itself is black and white. Like your, your sensor is black and white and they put a color filter, the bear filter, if you've heard of that. They put, and the bear is the pattern and he's the guy, I think bear is the guy who invented it. And uh, they put a red, green and blue filter, painted filter, colored filter on top of the sensor. And that's why the, photo, the pixel sites become green or blue or red. Okay. Well, the pattern of that filter is, the, on the bear sensor, it's a block of four, uh, two greens and a red and a blue. And that repeats over the whole center, sensor. Well, the problem is, is that depending upon the resolution of your lens and the resolution of your sensor, when you have a repeating pattern in the world, in nature, like a roof pattern or clothing, you'll get moiré, which is that, that shimmery pattern in your photographs, right? And so, um, so originally when they came out with eight megapixel and 10 megapixel cameras, the original cameras, six megapixels, etc., the lenses could resolve six, eight, 10 megapixels, 12 megapixels. So they had to put anti-aliasing filters or moiré filters on the front of the sensors to blur the image a little bit so that it would reduce the moiré. Otherwise, the moiré would have been really bad and it would have been a flaw, okay? So if you blur the image a little bit, it defocuses the image on the sensor and therefore eliminates the, blurs out the pattern, blurs out the moiré, and then you add sharpening later to get back the sharpening. It's a way to mitigate the moiré. Okay. I always kind of was under the impression that when we got to a higher megapixel sensors, because of the density, the pixel density, moiré became less of an issue. I assumed that it was because of the pixel density. Turns out that that's not what the problem, not, not what the solution was or the reason why they removed the anti-aliasing filters at 16, 20, 24 megapixels on APS-C, kind of around the same place with full frame. What it was, the reason why they were able to remove or why they did remove the anti-aliasing filters from the front of the sensors and build it as a feature was because the lens designers and the camera designers knew that they had exceeded the design specifications of their lens resolution targets. And what that means in English is 
The lenses couldn't resolve more than 12 megapixels. That's what they were designed for. And that's what they were manufactured for. And so the lenses themselves, the sets of lenses for these cameras themselves, blurred the images enough that they were able to do away with the moiré filters because the lenses weren't that sharp is the bottom line. That's fascinating, okay? Okay, we're seeing that today because people are putting legacy lenses on 40 megapixel cameras and they're not resolving. And people learned that pretty quickly that they're great lens that worked awesome on film and on their 12 megapixel camera well, when they put it on their 40, 36 megapixel full frame, it kind of sucked. And um, that's, you know, there's very few legacy lenses that are able to resolve at the level of a 36 megapixel full frame or a 26 megapixel APS-C. Okay. Okay. So the other thing is, is Bear originally invented this pattern, a 4x4 grid pattern. And he was the first one that it caught on. And then everybody followed that because it wasn't like this is the best way to do it. It turned out that it was a way to do it and it worked, it solved the problem. But it's not, it wasn't necessary, it didn't have to be that way. If Bear had decided that, you know what, let's not do a four by four grid, let's do a six by six grid like the X-Trans. So the X-Trans goes blue, green, green, red, green, green, blue, green, green, and then repeats, 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 and it's a six by six grid instead of, um, blue, green, red, green, blue, green, red, green. It's easier to see than it is to explain, but you get the idea. So if Bear had thought that like, yeah, four by four is gonna be a problem, there's gonna be a, a problem with, uh, you know, if Bear had said, said to himself, whoever he was, if he had said to himself, you know what, 30 years into the future, we're gonna have super high resolution sensors and they're gonna be able to make the lenses super high resolution as well. And that four by four grid's gonna be a problem then. Hey, let's do a six by six grid to mitigate moiré as an issue when we design 40 megapixel APS-C sensors, high resolution sensors, and we wanna design lenses to go along with that. Like we wouldn't have the bare sensor, everything would have been X-trans, right? Okay. But it wasn't. Bear is the one that caught on. Bear was the solution of the moment when we had six two megapixel cameras and five megapixel cameras. But the issue is, is that fast forward, you know, 20 years into the digital photography era, and now we're up to 40 megapixel and 60 megapixel sensors or more, and the bear sensor becomes an issue and moiré becomes an issue. Okay. Well, the guys at Fuji 10 years ago planned for that. And that's one of the reasons, I just learned this last week too in the same article, it's one of the reasons why they came up with the X-Trans sensor to begin with. And the Fuji manager in the interview that I read, he said, yeah, right from the beginning, we didn't have to design our lenses as one of the parameters is that we're not designing for ultimate sharpness, for ultimate resolution, which other camera manufacturers are doing. They're designing their lenses not for ultimate resolution because they didn't want to incur the detributes of moiré. Fuji, one of the reasons they went with the X-Trans sensor was because they wanted to design their lenses for ultimate sharpness, ultimate resolution. And they didn't have to worry about moiré because of the X-Trans filter pattern. <laughs> Very cool. I've always felt that like when you get it right and when you get it all dialed in and it does require some extra homework because it's not a bear sensor like Canon, Sony, Nikon, Olympus, everybody else is uses the bear sensor pattern. X-Trans is something different. And I always felt that when you got it right, like everybody says, oh, the Fuji lenses, they're, oh, they're just so sharp. Well, they're designed that way because they didn't have the restrictions they knew that they could, they could do it. They knew they could get away with it and they didn't have to worry about moiré. And I find it really interesting that here we are and now we've achieved 40 megapixel APS, APS-C sensors and some of the old lenses, like Fuji knew this was coming, some of the old lenses are on the list as capable of resolving 40 megapixels 
like they've been designing these lenses for a while, a few years, like, you know, the, the 35 F2 and the 23 F2 and the 16 to 8, the uh, 16 to 80, the 70 to 300, just to, just to name a few are lenses that are on the list and they will resolve 40 megapixels according to Fuji. And, and that's just phenomenal. I mean, you know, so there's a situation where, yeah, the X-Trans sensor makes a difference. And Fuji is definitely punching above their weight. I mean, I, I don't know. Now I'm questioning whether I could have gotten the 30 by 40 enlargements from other APS-C cameras. I'm not so sure. So, yeah, so really fascinating stuff. Don't take my word for it. I'll put a link to the imaging resource article. Read it for yourselves. I thought it was fascinating. So, and I learned some stuff there, you know, and uh, I trust imaging resource and I trust the uh, interview with the Fuji managers. I mean, the science behind what they were saying is valid. It makes sense. I mean, they were showing examples. So there it is. All right. So uh, we've had some snow. It's 35 degrees and I just saw a moth fly by, which is kind of wild. And I hope he knows where he's going, but it's pretty cold and there's not a lot to land on out here. But I wish him the best of luck because we're all just trying to survive. All right. Um, I'm going to go do some snow photography. And this time I will show you the photographs, whether they're good, bad, or indifferent. Last video, I just got a little lazy. But hey, I, I, I claim, you know, illness. I wasn't feeling so hot last week. I had a, had a cold, I had a little bit of fever. But I'm feeling better now. And I will put the effort in and I will show you the photographs. So let's go do some photography and let's see what happens. All right. Um, but I just wanted to share that, that information about X-Trans. I thought it was, it was enlightening for me. And I thought it was, I was really impressed by it. So, all right, let's do it. Something was loose there. So I remapped my AEL button to the Q button. I prefer it there. And I made that the, A, the Q button, the AEL button. No big deal. <clears throat> See what I'm doing there. But I think what I'm going to do now is I'm going to uh, come up here. I love the different aspect ratios. I'm going to go Acros. I think I'm going to do Acros green. Acros yellow. That looks cool. Let's give it a little, make sure that snow is in. And let's... Focus in the first thirds of the photograph. That's kind of cool.
Yeah, 5.6 ISO 125, tenth of a second. I don't know why I have face tracking on. There we go. Man, I don't think I need that exposure compensation. All right. There we go. It's like shooting a X-T3 on steroids in the sense that like you got 40 megapixels. It's really phenomenal. And what's really cool about that, yeah, it's like, uh, it's like it just, move, it's like shooting X-T3, except you got 40 megapixels and the autofocus works better. I can't argue with that. Um, one of the really cool things about the X-T5 is when you do use one of the aspect ratio crop modes, you're getting uh, like, I think it's like a 27 megapixel one by one and a 33 megapixel four by five. So that's really cool. That's kind of neat. That allows you to use the JPEGs if they turn out, you know, where you want them to be if you don't have to do much post-processing. A lot of times I don't. A lot of times I use the JPEGs. They work just fine. And I'm talking printing fine art prints from them. So. Well, there it is. Thanks for coming out. I appreciate it. Like, subscribe, hit the bell for notifications, and we'll see you out here. Have a great one. Bye.